September 9th, testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Acts 20, 21. There is an order as well as a harmony in the operations of the Spirit, which it is highly important should be observed. An ignorance or an oversight of this has led to great and fatal perversions of the gospel. All the self-righteousness of the Pharisee and all the self-devotion of the deluded disciple of the papal superstition have their origin here. Now, the order of the Spirit is this, regeneration of the heart first, then its sanctification. Reverse this, and we derange every part of his work, and as far as our individual benefits extends, render it entirely useless. Sanctification is not the first and immediate duty of an unrenewed person. Indeed, it were utterly impossible that it should be so. Sanctification has its commencement and its daily growth in a principle of life implanted in the soul by the eternal spirit. And to look for holiness in an individual still dead in sins is to look for fruit where no seed was sown. For the actings of life where no vitality exists is to expect, in the language of our Lord, to gather grapes from thorns and figs from thistles. The first and imperious duty of an unrenewed man is to prostrate himself in deep abasement and true repentance before God. The lofty look must be brought low. The rebellious will must be humbled. And in the posture of one overwhelmed with a sense of guilt, he is to look by faith to a crucified Savior and draw from thence life, pardon, and acceptance. True, most solemnly true it is, that without holiness no man shall see the Lord. Yet all attempts towards the attainment of holiness before repentance towards God and the faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will but disappoint the soul that looks for it. The works of renewal done, sanctification is comparatively an easy and delightful employment. Motives and exhortations to a life of holiness now find a ready response in the heart, already the temple of the Holy Spirit. The incorruptible seed there sown germinates into the plant, blossoms and ripens into the fruits of holiness, and the living water there welled springs up and pours forth its stream of life and purity, adorning and fertilizing the garden of the Lord. Let us then be careful how we disturb the arrangement and reverse the order of the blessed spirit in his work. Great errors have in consequence arisen, and souls have gone into eternity fearful and faithfully deceived. Especially cautious should they be in this matter, who are appointed to the office of spiritual instruction, to whose care immortal souls are entrusted, lest in a matter involving interests so precious and so lasting, any should pass from beneath their teachings into eternity, ignorant of the one true method of salvation.